Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of the Pros and Cons podcast. Today's going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a quick statement here. Uh, it's not going to be too long. It's not going to be too short. But it's going to include everything that you at home need to know. I know that there is a lot of uh, questions right now out and about, and I want to take uh, I want to take a second and just touch on everything. Uh, I'm sorry if it seems a little bit like I'm out in the open. Um, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to broadcast today because there's a lot going on. Uh, but I need to, uh, I have to say it, and I have to say some stuff. I have to officially say my statement. Uh, like I said, it's uh, it's going to be a little difficult. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. Um, but in a uh, brighter note, make sure to tune in tonight. We have uh, Mayor McCauley coming on at 5 o'clock. Tomorrow we have Cody Hasbro-Thompson, District 42, Thursday, we have Erica Kolinich, and then Friday, we have uh, James Ellum. So make sure to tune in for all those shows, and we will uh, you know, get right into everything. So I want to give a quick statement about an issue that is currently uh, taking place. Currently, my ex-partner, Michael Moorhead, is trying to blackmail uh, myself and my father, threatening to release audio clips screenshots of times that we were together and talking. These supposed recordings and screenshots were taken without any consent and were taken in times that we thought that, uh, that he thought he, we were, or he is our uh, friend and we were just friends talking. During these discussions, we talked about how certain people were just crazy, uh, not anything, I mean, just some people like, uh, in which... I already had uh, mentioned him this uh, this morning. We talked to him this morning and uh, just a couple other people. Uh, just they were crazy, not as in a bad thing, but kind of crazy, like, what the hell are they doing, that type of thing. And we just talked. Um, and how someone needs to do something. How I mean, whenever we were talking, we would always say that someone needs to step up, someone needs to say uh, what's going <sighs> Excuse me, what's going on. Um... It's just, you know, just to put it out there. The Mountaineer News was started way before. Uh, it was started as a partnership. Both Michael and I joined together, um, and we were very good friends. Uh, it started way before, but whenever I came back from Florida, both my father and I were met with an interesting surprise. So as soon as we got back from, uh, this was February, I think, something like that. It was whenever the corona officially was starting up. And some stuff, I mean, we came back and it was very interesting. Michael Moorhead had created a website titled The Buchanan Rag. When I first inspected the website, uh, I was honestly pleased because information that was factual was coming out about Sheila Lewis Signs, a local city candidate that, uh, as many know, I cannot, uh, I cannot stand. Uh, the reason why I cannot stand her, uh, and also information was coming out about a local broadcaster, Caden Cowger, uh, because they both had attacked and slandered me to the point that I had to get law enforcement involved. Whenever I was running for office, I had to contact uh, law enforcement for harassment. I was sent messages. Um, I was had, uh, having articles put out that were completely and utterly false. And uh, stuff was coming out that was just silly. And me leaning up against the Twin Towers, Sheila was texting and threatening my uh, political advisor, or not political advisor, campaign advisor, uh, or campaign manager, Beth Zikafu's day. She was threatening her. Uh, Caden and Sheila had worked up a setup uh, at the Republican Christmas dinner where it was purposely, Beth was put into a purpose corner in order to get pushed out and um, to get pushed out and then have an article written about her going after her. It was sickening. And the most sickening part about it was at the same exact time people were going out and she was considered like 
top of the line, absolutely amazing person. Well, in the background, we were dealing with police and law enforcement because there was harassment. It was sad. So whenever I saw that, that Sheila Lewis Sines and Caden Calgary were both getting uh, factual information put out on them, uh, I was actually, you know, I was, I wouldn't say happy. I was, uh, I guess the best way I could say it is I was, uh, you know, okay. Um, but I was interested because of the fact that stuff was finally coming out. People are, they were actually getting a taste of their own medicine with Caden going out and trying to do a whole bunch of different blogs, trying to go after me and stuff like that. So it was, it just kind of, I agreed with it. That's the best way I can put it is, you know, I was okay with it because it started out as a very calm, um, just a calm uh, thing. I mean, everything was, I mean, everything was just straight up and it was factual and there was, it was just being, and you know, there was Buchanan values being put out there too. So at first it was candidates and public figures and that's a taste of their own medicine. So I was fine. Now here is where I get to kind of my involvement in it. Whenever everything started, I had Buchanan values happening, or I saw Buchanan values happening and the anti stuff that they were putting out against candidates that were very close to me. But they were getting away with it. And it just stuck with me. And in one uh, video that was actually used against Scott Preston, it even included a part of my father's show that just, and it was used to, or in order to trash Scott. And Scott Preston is an amazing guy. I love him to death. And it was just sickening to see that. So whenever Michael approached me and he asked me, he said, can you make some anti-political ads? for the Buchanan rag. I never wrote any articles, never have wrote any articles for the Buchanan rag. But he approached me and he asked me, can you make some anti-political article or uh, ads? And I agreed. So all the ads that were made on Facebook were done by myself. I did make them. I did them because I saw what was happening on the other side. And I believe either you take all of them down or you do the ex or you play the exact same card, and that's what I did. All the information that was put into the articles, apart from some, uh, you know, there was satire and stuff like that, um, which doesn't count at all. But you know, there was other information and some more serious stuff that was straight backed by information that he had provided, and. It was information that also some other people in town knew that I had heard. And so whenever that happened, I put it into the ad. The whole entire thing was made for satire purposes. It wasn't made to slander. It wasn't made to do anything like that. It was just made uh, for pure satire. And I did it because I saw what was happening and I wanted either the equal card to be played or, you know, something. So I, anti, more anti-political ads were asked for me to produce. And the thing was, it started getting, instead of anti-political, it started turning to the point that it was personal, personal people. And the thing is, I will do anti-political ads because that's what was being played. That was the same card that was being played. However, I refuse to do a... Uh, personal ad on some personal people that had nothing to do, that they're just living their own personal lives. I refuse to do ads in order to bash them. They're, they're citizens of Upshur County. I do not agree with putting out ads that has to do with that. And I'm not going to do that. So I refused. In that list included Rob Gifford, which, uh, you know, now we are uh, talking and stuff and, uh, he is a uh, nice guy. We are currently talking with him as well. 
included in that list was Rob Gifford, uh, that I was supposed to make a political ad. I refused. I refused. I'm not going to do something for personal citizens. But I agreed because I was going to do it for, you know, a public figure um, and Sheila, who is a candidate, both of which had come after me. And I wasn't going to put up with bullying. I've dealt with bullying in the past. I'm dealing with bullying now. I was bullied throughout elementary school, and I'm not going to put up with bullying now. Period. I'm not going to. Period. So, soon after, the rag started turning shady. Very, very shady. I would sit down with Michael and I would tell him, don't do this stuff. Make sure it's factual information. Make sure the stuff you're putting out is proper. Do not make stuff up. Do not go and just joke around. Do stuff that you know is true and make sure not to break the law. This is going to be done as an informative site, not as a hateful site. But soon after the, it started to turn shady, included in that was there started to be stalking involved. Personal family members, like I said, were put into it. And the most sickening part was dead relatives were also uh, a possibility that he kept throwing up and th throwing in and saying, let's put in dead relatives. And one of which was Rob Gifford's brother uh, that had recently passed away. That's sick. It is personally sick. Going and stalking is sick. Posting people's addresses. Well, no matter what side you are on, no matter where or when, is sick. So I refused to be tied into this. Personal family members like Caden Calger's mother, Marcella Calger, I think, or grandmother, I do not know the relation, were also put up there. That's a personal family member. I didn't agree with that. Like I said, Rob Gifford's brother that just recently passed away was also wanted to be put into that. That's sick. Putting stuff up about how one of the first articles, how Caden wasn't paying or wasn't properly certified, that is factual, factual information. That has been proven. That is proper. Putting up there people's addresses and stalking them, then randomly saying stuff, is not proper. I'm sorry, but it's not. My father and I did not agree with it at all. And we constantly told him to leave others out of it, leave the residents out of it, leave dead relatives out of it, Leave all that out of it. But he manipulated our friendship and used us for his own accord. Constantly kept begging me to make more ads. In this, we also had a joint account. The joint account is what ran the Facebook page. He had access to it. I had access to it. I used it to put up the videos and also some articles. He also asked me for a lot of pictures so that's where a lot of the pictures that were made, were made. It was a poor judge of my moral character. I shouldn't have done it. Looking back on everything that has happened, I shouldn't have. Now, I'm still going to say that what happened at the beginning with Sheila and Caden, I'm not going to lie. It, because of the stuff that has happened in the past, that was something that I had to... I was okay with. Because it was the fact of the people that were currently trying to trash me and trying to get me killed. Not where, uh, you know, I never agree with someone trying to get someone killed. I On either side. But with them trying to get me killed, it did make me happy that whenever their own 
uh, information of stuff that they had done in the past was coming up and surfacing, that does make you happy. It's the same thing as whenever you have someone that has is not, not as much close to you, but whenever you have someone that slashes your tire or something else like that, and then you see them getting... Uh, well, actually, you see that they... You know that they did it, but they just went on ahead with it. And, you know, they just left. They got away with it. And then you see shortly after that, stuff's coming out on them, including whenever they slash your tire and stuff like that. You can't say that you're not happy that that stuff came out. You are. And that's what happened in this case. I was happy that their information was being put out there as stuff that they had done. But again, it started to get shady, including stalking personal family members and, like I said, dead brothers. So I left the Mountaineer News before you could try and ruin myself or my father. He became controlling, started threatening my, and started threatening my show. I don't do that. I do not uh, put up with being control controlled. I don't do that. Period. I am not going to be controlled. I just saw that in the comment section, Michael, you're here. I want to tell you one thing, Michael. You were a brother to me. Me and you were close. I'd had trouble with my brother in the past. Him and I were sometimes close and not so close. And to be honest, he was a stepbrother, and I, after he left at 18 years old, I was kind of, you know, I was stuck by myself. My parents love me unconditionally, and I love them absolutely 110%. But the thing was, you were, you were my friend. I trusted you. I trusted you with everything. I trusted you to be as close as I, I mean, as close as, I mean, just a friend. And then you did, turned around and did this. You can't deny that what was being sent, and I have all of a whole entire stack of what was happening, I have right in my hands, which I will read here momentarily. You need help. Please, go and get help. It's okay to accept that you need help. This is not an ego thing, and I know you're thinking that it's just a huge ego thing. You're going to the point of blackmail, which is sickening. I left the Mountaineer News, and I, I distanced myself because I couldn't do that. My only involvement, like I said, was the ads and the joint account where I put up articles and he also put up articles. And also I just had put out the uh, videos. That was what I did. He came to me, he asked me, I did it. And I was okay with it because like I said, the people that were in the ads, and actually shortly after I did the ads, I realized that some people that I roped in didn't deserve to be roped in like Jack Rigger. And that's why I wanted to bring him here and say, and just sit down and talk to him and just you know, figure out his side of the story. But yes, I made the political ads. And I'm not going to... I'm not going to beat around the bush. I also had this joint account with under the name of Stephen Choate. S-T-E-V-E-N-C-H-O-O-D-E. -E. I did that because... Well, I did it because I saw what was happening at first. I saw the same people that were going out there were, you know, the people that were going after me. And then I realized that there was shady shit going down. <sighs> now he's taking it to the point of sending me uh, messages saying that he is playing God. He is harassing me on all my accounts and sending me blackmailing messages, which I will read here momentarily. Saying again 
that either I will shut down the site or I will be run to Florida, which is one place that I do want to move to whenever I'm a little bit older. Again, I'm not going to be bullied. Under patient and healthcare confidentiality, a lot of things had to be kept secret. And a lot of things had to be kept quiet. But now law enforcement is officially involved. Because law enforcement, prosecuting attorneys, and sheriff's office officials are officially involved. Because I am not going to be bullied and threatened and told that I'm going to have to be run off to Florida. I'm going to sit behind this mic, no ego, just myself to my fans, and tell you what happened. Tell you what took place. I know that Caden will probably want to do an article on this. Caden, I know we've had our differences in the past. Some things we agree on, some things we don't. I ask you if you want to do an article, please have the decency to sit down with me first. Before you start writing that article in order to try to bash me and to put down my family like you have done before, and put down myself, including like you have done where you've photoshopped me next to the Twin Towers, like I had something to do with 9-11 because I'm Muslim, please sit down with me first. That's all I ask you. It's very simple. It's proper journalistic integrity. Sit down with me. I know, like I said, we've had our differences in the past, but we've sat down before. You remember, I remember. We both sat down. So please. In the blackmailing messages, I also want to include, he keeps saying that, Michael Moorhead keeps saying that he's going to quote-unquote release audio messages of whenever we were sitting each other, with each other. These were private video audios. None of which we had any idea that was going on. And I can't believe that someone that was my friend did something like this. Like I said, I will read some of the things that he has said in a second. <clears throat> but I want to also mention again that I left because of his how much he was going crazy. And I cannot be a part of that. His constant obsession showed his sickness. I don't know what did you gain. I don't know what happened. This shows that there's something wrong, Michael. Please get help. You have kids, you have a wife, and you're an asset to our community. I'm meaning as a resident to our community. Please get help. Please. Again, I'll read everything um, here in a second. But again, police have been called and charges are going to be pressed. I know that people in this town are going to get upset because I am. I try to be as kosher as I physically can. And my father is a very kosher individual. But I just want everyone to know. He's going to continue to threaten me. He's going to continue to threaten to release information. He continues to say that he wants to run us out of town. And threatening that if I don't shut this, sh this show down because of where I separated. And it's very clear that he's mad that we separated. That he will continue to blackmail us. Commenting on my posts 
all over my if you go onto Facebook my, my what Buchanan needs he's under a fake name I know it's a fake name the police have confirmed it as well because like I said the police have been here and they've confirmed it Frank Frank fake name one of the fake names is Frank Limbacher Again, the police have confirmed again that it was him. Another one of the fake names is Bruce Springsteen. Like Bruce Springsteen, but Springsteen. I'm, I can't, I'm not going to be run out of town. My father has been practicing in this community, taking care of every single patient that walks through his door for almost 25 years. It doesn't matter if you come in and you do not have insurance or money or whatever. He took an oath that he will protect everyone, that he will cover you through everything. I'm not gonna let my father deal with that. Whenever I ran for office, my main goal was equality. My main goal was to bring everyone together because we all are God's children. We all were put on this earth for a reason. But again, of course, stuff like this happens. I also have comments threatening that audio clips were going to be released on this podcast and that all of my after or this today was going to be, and I quote from Michael Moorhead, the series finale of the pros and cons podcast. So he sent my father a message saying, make sure to get up, get dressed and get ready because today we're going to learn what really happens. And again, tons of random messages. I want everyone to know the truth. My involvement ended with the ads and the joint account. And any time that he asked for stuff on Sheila or Caden, which included the stuff that, like the ads and stuff like that, that is where my involvement ended. I only gave it to him because of what had happened in the past. How much they had hurt me and how much people actually physically were attacking whenever I was running for office. People think that they can, that this never happened. Staff members were physically attacked. One got grabbed and pushed down and told why the hell are you living or why the hell are you working for this Muslim asshole you we know exactly where you work people were going around saying I know exactly where he uh, lives my residence was here in the city but they wanted to go to my parents address and they wanted to go after me there my father's patients were accosted while just sitting at dinner, they were told, why the hell do you go to him? That Muslim asshole. All of this started because Mountaineer Journal, Caden Calger, started posting the articles, all of which were stretched. I couldn't do this any longer. And on top of that, Sheila was posting anti-Muslim stuff about how Muslims do not belong in office whenever I was running for office. It wasn't the fact of, well, I had a grudge. It was the fact of whenever I was asked to do the ads, I knew what Caden had been doing. And I had to step up. And so I made three ads, one circus ad, one ad where it said everything that Sheila had done. And there was also a, f a third ad. I forget which one that was. I know I did a third ad. I forget which one. That's what I did. That was my involvement. I will own up to it. I will put my name to it. I went on my own because I'm not going to be controlled. I went on my own because I'm not going to be bullied. Things were getting shady on the Buchanan rag. 
At first, it started, like I said, proper, where people that were political figures and public figures and were going out on Facebook threatening other people and telling people, you know, so on and so forth. Whenever that stuff came out, of course, I was, I was completely fine because everything was factual. But now we turn to the point of stalking. I'm not going to do stalking. That's just the way it's going to be. So now to read some stuff from my screenshots of everything that has currently happened. And again, currently, as I'm on this broadcast, Michael is texting me laughing faces, trying to get me to, or tr how should I say, uh, trying to interrogate me. This was one of the, and I cannot put this up on a, up on screen, just because there's no way, first off, there's no way I can, I couldn't have a chance to get it up, and plus on top of that, I have to, or everything, this whole entire packet that I'm holding in my hands is currently in the hands of the city, or of the Upshur County Sheriff's Office. So what I'm going to read is in the hands of the Upshur County Sheriff's Office, but I am not going to put it up on Facebook because they get to see exactly what has happened. First thing, the email and password for the joint account was put in including a pa the password, I will not mention the email, well, the email was CalgarCon, sent by Michael Moorhead, by the, with the password, Calgar sucks Robert Gifford. Michael wrote, isn't hitting what the rag was set up for? Why not take credit for the rag and do the stories on pros and cons? Seriously, that's where it is headed. Robert Gifford even has you in his top three suspects, which ties us all in. His references to substitute his thinking, question mark, your show. It's an awesome format, Derry. I just think hitting with the rag and keeping news and podcasts clean is what needs to happen. Regardless of it or not, but that's not my call, only my experience. Better to keep up at all times than expose any craps who have emotional reactions. Hitting only looks hypocritical with what you are trying to do. It's counterproductive. But it's your show, your decisions. I won't judge or hate you for the decisions you make either way. Not my place. Which I commented, that is why we need to make sure we keep friends. Things are going to happen. And we just need to just separate. Let's go to the next page. Just make sure to catch everything. And this, uh, that is why I want to make sure we keep friends. Uh, Rob Gifford, I will mention your name again, um, was thinking that it's Matthew Kerner. Uh, it's not. It had nothing to do with Matt or Mayor McCulley at all. In no way, shape, or form. I said, me hitting, which was with Caden and everything else, and the rag hitting won't connect us. It is only if I start saying things verbatim, or saying things that you send me before it comes out. If I force this show that you're currently listening to to be completely clean, and completely just be news, weather, and stuff like that, that I don't feel like it's going to be fun. It's better what I feel happy doing, and then the show is coming straight relaxed <clears throat> straight relaxed and straight from my insides I think that we should disconnect them for now as in the pros and cons of Mountaineer News but that people won't connect the news with the show then I can do and say without changing it and be worried what will happen with the news we won't make an announcement or anything just disconnect them and keep doing what we're doing if someone tries to tie us 
we will say that the differencing between the show and the news was kept best kept separate. Separate. That is a private message again uh, that we had talked about. He said, got to do what makes you happy. We'll separate the two given the conflict of interest as editor and news broadcaster as the pros and cons under the radar. I said, perfect. That makes sure that we keep friends and we still are safe. <sighs> the next message I get from Michael Moorhead. Yeah, I'm going to let the rag die where it is. Fuck it. My, why bother anymore? I'm going to have to think about the news. Do I want the extra work or not? I can make it successful on my own. I just don't know if I want to anymore. Funny how things change when they're not fun. Now we get into the threats. This was done by Frank Limbacher. Please be sure to announce the episodes all over the what pages. I'll share it everywhere, including to Max page, which I'm guessing Mayor McCauley's, and pump it up there just for fun. I'm informing Caden and his posse to tune in so he can be the first to report it. Don't shit yourself when you see more than five viewers and one of them is Caden. You know he lost big in his city council run, but at least he finished his race and you didn't quit. And didn't quit. Your ego will kill you one day, just saying. But before tomorrow, you will always remember my name, bitch. Your daddy, too. At 12.20 a.m. last night. Ah, it's midnight, my favorite hour. It means a new day has arrived. An overdue of reckoning and look. Mummy, I've decided to play God today. You still up? Question mark. Have you ever experienced poetic justice? How about realization that you've done fucked up in real time? Ha ha, how sweet those moments are in the peripheral energies. I'm ready to knock someone off their personal pedestal and wash my hands of this shit. Hurry up, five o'clock. The first person I plan to alert once the audio clips are posted is Mary Ann Spears, because I have someone calling her a bitch while making fun of the Me Too movement. Not once, but three times. Ha ha, inflection from Doc is everything, ain't it? I haven't put up the screenshots yet, but don't really need to. But Carl Weaver has abducted people by gunpoint, so have fun with that. So with that final message, I only wish you could have gotten to the, know the real me. I really thought you guys were real at first, but your true colors were shown. Then you gave me another story to tell. By the way, manipulative tactics are easily recognizable by most anyone with a lick of common sense. Just so you are aware moving forward. Your dad needs to learn that lesson more than anyone I've met. It deserves an award of exposure. Best of luck to you in the future. I'll be waiting for your content. Or, <clears throat> I'll be waiting for your podcast. Don't pussy out now, you okay? I need you to show the world that ego of yours at five. Cool guys don't look at explosions. That was just one of many messages. Let's keep going. I have a picture here of a page that I manage called What Buchanan Really, 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 Really Needs. It was done for the purpose of, well, as a real group for people can put stuff as positive, but I constantly was seeing groups outside and Buchanan called What Buchanan Needs, What Buchanan Really Needs, What Buchanan Really, Really Needs, and so <coughs> I started it. Michael Moorhead puts up a, a post. Be sure to tune into the Pros and Cons podcast tomorrow at 5 p.m. Special guests including Dave McCulley and more. On my event page on the Pros and Cons, I have screenshots of everything and everything's been sent to the police. So if anyone uh, wants proof, you can always go up there. And if you can't find the proof because it's been deleted, well, I have everything right here. On my event page of the Pros and Cons with Asad Khan, I said it make sure to tune in. To Mayor McCauley tonight at 5. Frank Limdenbacher, the same exact person, and also Michael Moorhead, be sure to share the hell out of it, for this is out of this, everyone. Most importantly, don't miss it for the world. Can't wait to knock that ego down to Florida. Michael and I were the only people that would contact and talk about how uh, I was ready to move to Florida. 
And now I have every intention to move to Vero Beach whenever I get a little bit older. That's just the way it is. And I get this message, which was posted everywhere, copied, pasted everywhere. Can't wait for tomorrow's show with our mayor. My friends and I will be in front row and have some pretty tough questions for you all. We've also heard about a link with some interesting audio clips that were recorded between the four walls. Can't wait to see what Mac has to say and many others. Should be the show of the century. Thank you for your platform and your support. That same exact that same exact thing was put everywhere. Now we get to the biggest one. I have no doubt that there are a lot of people who can't wait to hear what's been said about them directly from the horse's mouth tomorrow. The epitome of two-faced friends I've exposed with our mayor, front and center. Great stuff. There was hours of audio to rummage through, by the way. Hell, I even forgot about the earliest discussions we had about Rob, someone named Patty Adams, and Lavera Gillum. Anyway, your all's juiciest remarks are queued up and ready to go on a bit.ly link. When your show goes live, I will fire it everywhere from multiple accounts and PM those who were affected. Can't deny that it's Doc and you saying those terrible and hideous things about those friends you can publicly love, you so publicly love behind closed doors. All live on your show. No less, Marianne, Rob Gifford, and the entire Calgar clan. Wow, they are ready to pounce. How pissed will Weaver be when he sees your screenshots of having a blast by duping Robin live on your show? Speaking of screenshots... So how about we release the dragons tomorrow, shall we? Perhaps your show must go on hiatus for a few weeks. Maybe this show had a positive COVID case. You should have known better than, than to try and play underhanded after the fact. I would have just gone away, but that detrimental impulsivity of yours has made it a simple decision for me. Shut the show down for a while or be prepared to move to Florida sooner or later. Okay? Question mark. Guess we're all fingers point, Assad. Everything is registered to you, remember? You even made the final when you logged me into your server a couple weeks ago. Stephen Choate. And for the record, your associated specialist phone can be destroyed, but the SMS can still be received. But you already know that, didn't you, Mr. Choate? Consider that a courtesy. Otherwise, you would not have seen it coming. That is my kindness. Reciprocated. All recordings, all done, that were put out, or that you know, were quote-unquote taken, all were taken by what we thought was a friend. So, and there's more. I'm going to continue. Here I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and even more, like 20 different times, of where a Bruce Springsteen was going up commenting on my post the same exact stuff that you just heard. I'll mention my more comments here in a second. Again, the can't wait for tomorrow's mayor everything else I was here again I have a screenshot of that he constantly was putting it on almost every single one of my accounts but now let's get to our personal messages on Facebook let's start from the beginning and I know Michael you're thinking that I'm a toxic and stuff like that but the fact is you were bullying me I don't put up with bullying, and I never have. I asked him, can we meet? Just to sit down after I had officially left the Mountaineer News. He said, not today. I'm still pondering the events of this week. I don't think you guys have the faintest clue as how that did affect me, and how it have affected me and the news. Sure, I'm totally okay with taking on full life. Full liability for Danny Styles' actions, who he brought on as a uh, media advisor. My money is his money. Jesus, is, Jesus. I'm still trying to fathom how you guys thought that would be okay. 
not just adding Danny Styles. You guys obviously had the courtesy to consult me regarding potential legal and financial matters affecting only me before making such a boneheaded decision. They had the balls to place me on the spot, then had the balls to place me on the spot with him after your dad had already committed. What the fuck? How was I supposed to fucking respond to that? We brought him on, which actually Michael knew was happening. And this still... And it was only as a media director, it was going to be directly for only my show, which was going to be to help develop scripts and stuff like that out and about. That's all it was. We were all fortunate I didn't say out loud the things going through my head during those moments. I knew you have read my facials. Your dad certainly did. Sure, let me tell you how I really feel and how I really feel and then let Danny fucking st- uh, Danny fucking tell the world. I had to turn my disgust into just going along on the spot, not fucking appreciated. I'm with the podcast. I'm not trying to be a dick like with the podcast. I'm not trying to be a dick here. I simply refuse to be held legally liable for your fun, Daria. How is that being fair or considerate to me? You still have some maturing to do, and you need to let that fucking ego of yours go, bro. This was actually all in regards to the Facebook play that we did. That's it. The Facebook play that was all cleared by all legal actions, including uh, our lawyers and everything. This is what that was about. You will have difficulty... You'll have a difficult life if you wait to learn these. Let's see. Uh, wait to learn. You'll have a difficult life if you wait to learn these lessons later on. This is coming from someone who cares for you. As a brother, exercising the right to use tough fucking love when needed. Now, I need you for you to think of these terms very carefully. You ready? Let's say that Skinner, which I never mentioned on my podcast, ever once during that Facebook play, never, didn't like the way he was portrayed on your show last night. He has the right to sue you now because you demeaned him in a public manner for no other reason than demeaning him in a skit to further divisiveness. Everything was completely taken care of and no Skinner was not involved in that at all. Even, there, even if there isn't a case to be made, which it, in this case it would, your fun, quote-unquote, has now may become a major liability, son. Now, I want to also mention this. Quote-unquote, he had registered me as the Mountaineer News and we had uh, officially merged. He had not registered me at all. He kept claiming over two weeks that it had been registered, and it wasn't. As soon as we decided to separate... I went over and sent in all my information to the Secretary of State. I took care of all the information, and in 24 hours, I had my own Assad Khan media with trade name pros and cons. And everything was done. That's all it took. That's all it took. He can now today, if he wants, sue you for public defamation and libel because he didn't Uh, because he didn't sign any release form to be portrayed as. I sent him this message. I understand that, and that is why I don't want you to take a liability at all and separate, by the way, I never mentioned Skinner. That's why things need to be discussed face-to-face. I also ran it by Dad's lawyer. I will announce today that we have separated because of creative differences. I am also registering, resigning from the Mountaineer News and will make that public as well. I do not want anything to affect you, liability, liability or anything else. I appreciate your input, but it's better we part ways. I put out the statement on all platforms and I removed myself as admin. This way we can be friends without a worry that anything will happen or anything will sink. We can then revisit everything later on down the line. Michael comes in. Robbie Skinner's name was mentioned and words he wrote. I heard it, but regardless, doesn't matter. As long as you were having fun, seriously, I would seek a second opinion with legal. I truly would. You have been ill-advised. 
from myself. I don't want to lose friendship. So this way, if something happens, it will be separated. I do thank you for your input. Michael Moorhead. Don't, don't announce shit until you hear from me. Michael, or myself. Michael, I have been very kind, and we have been very, very close. Please stop bullying me. Michael. Ha ha. Fuck off. <sighs> there you have it. Now, let's go into Facebook. <sighs> Frank Lindenbacher, all you have to do, this is your comments. All you have to do is subpoena Associated Specialist phone records. Do you need the number? Dr. Khan has some recorded comments to share with his friends too. Links will be posted in this podcast. You too, Daria. Ha ha. Let's take a look. Tons of hearts and stuff like that. Save me the time. Don't have to wait until five for your grand revelations. Not just the rag. Dr. Khan reveals how he truly feels about the ones he loves. Audio, audio. Now let's go to my messages. My messages sent straight from him. And again, the police have confirmed that this is Michael Moorhead. So there's no way to get around it. This is my last message to you. Yes, this one. See you later today, homie, for the series finale. Have a nice life, okay? Sleep well. It's been fun. Can't wait for 945 as soon as I created this a couple minutes ago. Let's do this. Nothing you can do can be said as bad as the words coming out of Doc's mouth to those he trusted. My heart on just got bigger. Do it, pussy. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Now let's keep scrolling down. On my James Ellum that is happening this Friday. Too bad this show won't air. On my Facebook Odyssey, which he had a problem with whenever I officially did it, just because, well, just because. Please stop posting this garbage. Are you the Buchanan rag? No, it's you, Michael. Can I borrow your phone? I have revelations for your show today. All will be revealed 5 p.m. with Mayor Dave today. You need to learn how to interview, son. Your show sucks. Let's put it off air today with some audio clips. Please share, please share everywhere. Can't wait for today's show with our mayor. My friends and I will be sitting front row, and I have some pretty tough questions for you all. We've also heard about a link that some interesting audio clips that were recorded between four walls. Can't wait to see what Mac has to say and many others. Should be the show of the century. Thank you for your platform and support. That. So the fact of the matter is, Michael, you were a brother to me. You were a friend to me. And now you have turned to the point of you're blackmailing me. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to be putting up with this. I'm not going to be bullied. I'm not going to do this type of stuff. I'm not, period. That's just the way it's going to be. I'm not going to deal with this crap. I've been bullied whenever I was through elementary school. I'm not going to put up with this. This is not an ego thing, apart from on your end. Because you, I don't know why, but you are so upset because I left the Mountaineer News. Because it was starting to get to the point that... Because you were upset. I mean, you were so upset because I had left and because we had separated. Which I can't believe. I honestly can't believe. I separated because I didn't want to get into shady shit. I didn't want to be controlled and I didn't want to, I certainly didn't want to be bullied. I started this show many, many years ago. 
Many people don't know this. I started this exact same show, Pros and Cons, many, many, many years ago, way before I started Office, maybe, maybe way before I did anything. I started it, it got nowhere. Why? Because I didn't have this type of stuff that I had today. Some people would watch, but it was never to the point, or to the point that you see here today. After I ran for office, I realized it would be fun to have a chance to give politicians because I saw the way that people really didn't give me a chance to speak because they just wanted to trust only one site. I wanted a chance for politicians, both conservative, liberal, moderate, libertarian, you name it. I wanted to give them all a chance to be able to come here have questions, have a conversation, and get their point across. That's why I started this show. I didn't start it to hurt anyone. I didn't start it to hit anyone. I did it for a chance for everyone could have a chance. That's why I started this show. And it became a hit. With some... V- or with some... Uh, With some videos reaching over 1,500 uh, views, likes all over the place, things being shared. And the thing is, back whenever we had our living room concert, right before we started, where I took my studio and we changed it, and Michael and I were sitting there playing guitar and, you know, had our mics on us, and right before we went live, I looked at him and I said, Michael, you know, we we never would have become such best friends if it wasn't for everything that happened. Now look at us. We're standing in the middle of a studio with cameras on us, just about to make a fool out of ourselves as we go up and we just talk and have fun. I gave him a fist bump and I told him, buddy, I'm glad that we had met. Never did I know that he was recording our conversations and doing the stuff that he was doing. Again, I'm not going to say that I had no involvement with the Buchanan rag. I knew about it, and I did ads. I did that other different types of stuff because of what had happened to those people in the past. But once it started getting into personal stuff and people's dead relatives and so on, said, no, I'm not going to be a part of that. If someone wants to write an article, or Caden, if you want to write an article about how I did ads for this, just have the decency to sit down with me first. If you're going to put out something, just make sure that it's put out properly. That's all I can say. So here you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was the whole entire truth. Police are currently involved. Prosecuting attorneys are currently involved. Presses are being charged. Charges are being pressed. That's all I can say, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to try to pick myself up for this evening for Mayor McCauley, but all I can say now is Michael... If you're listening, all I can ask you, buddy, is just please, go get help. We were once so close. We were once brothers. We worked perfectly. We started the Mountaineer News with hope of having a newspaper that everyone, everyone could chime in for. Conservatives, liberals, it doesn't matter. We started as something for everyone to have a chance. And now this. It has also taken it to the point that in the About Me section on the Buchanan Rag, that he has now put my father's picture as a caricature up on the Buchanan Rag, trying to claim that my father is behind it, which he wasn't a part of it at all. Matt Kerner was not a part of it at all. Mayor McCauley was not a part of it at all. I never wrote one article, ever. 
I never started any of that stuff. I did not start the website. I did not do anything apart from the ads and the joint Facebook account of Stephen Chode. That was my affiliation. I know I'm going to get flack for it, but the, de- or, but the difference is I'm going to stand up here and tell you guys straight from my show and straight from my heart what happened and how I feel about it. Because every single day, whenever you listen into the show, I want you to feel comfortable listening into the show. I also know after this, I'm going to get tons of messages. Possibly, you know, a victim card. But the fact is, all the evidence, all the proof is right here. And in the hands of the sheriff's department. As I was sitting here and I was doing this, he comes up just to give everyone an idea. If you go up, he says in our comment section, wow, Daria, you really are going here. I knew you were really toxic, but this is out of hand. This is slanderous. What joint account? Okay, I've heard enough. Like I said, Michael, everything's in the hands of the sheriff's department. I have every single part in this whole entire packet of everything that was sent, including you talking about the rag and telling everything. And there's no other way to put it, buddy. This is not slanderous. Because I know that you had the Wix account. It got shut down. Then you started building up your own servers. Hell, I don't know how to do any of that shit. I knew where I my professional uh, ability lied, which was to make ads and to Photoshop. That's where I lie. I can't create websites. I have no idea how to create a website. My merchandise sites and all those sites, they're free sites from Wix. They're all just a uh, template. You type what you want in, you adjust some uh, colorings, and there is the site. That's all I got. This was all done professionally. This was all done by buying domains and everything. There's no other way to put it. I'm not going to let you bully me any longer. I'm just not. Period. I know people are going to get mad. I know that for a fact. I'm going to stand here and I'm going to tell everyone exactly what I had and what I did. Again, ladies and gentlemen, just make sure to tune in tonight at 5. This is all being recorded and also sent over to the Sheriff's Department. Thank you, everyone.